Set along the ocean with rolling hills and the iconic Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco is one of the most beautiful cities in the United States and the jewel of Northern California. The city is full of history, great neighborhoods, parks, beaches, museums, and a whole host of entertainment options and things to do. Some of the most famous attractions are Alcatraz Island and Fisherman's Wharf, but the sightseeing possibilities here are extensive. San Francisco's Chinatown is the largest of its kind in North America and definitely worth visiting. For an interesting experience, hop on one of the historic cable cars and tour the city. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated tourist attractions in San Francisco. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now let's cut to the chase. At 10, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. The San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, SFMOMA, is one of the city's top museums with 170,000 square feet of exhibition space spread across 10 floors. The museum focuses on 20th century art in all forms and the innovative and interesting exhibits are constantly changing. The permanent collection consists of 33,000 pieces and one of the more interesting collections are contained within the Fisher Collection. The museum is housed in a modern, architecturally stunning building that was extensively renovated and expanded in 2016. The light and airy building is a pleasure to wander about. Should you work up an appetite, grab a bite at Cafe 5 in the museum's Jean and James Douglas Family Sculpture Garden. For a more refined dining experience, try and secure a table at the Michelin-starred in-situ restaurant. Next up at 9, California Academy of Sciences. The California Academy of Sciences in Golden Gate Park is an architectural marvel as well as a multifaceted museum. This state-of-the-art green building with a sustainable design has a two-and-a-half-acre living roof, covered with native plants and even rolling hills to match the natural surroundings. The roof also has solar panels to generate electricity and the soil acts as natural insulation. The walls are largely made of glass, allowing for natural light. Inside is an incredible natural history museum, planetarium, aquarium, rainforest and more. Yes, rainforest! The Steinhardt Aquarium includes some 38,000 live specimens and a 25 feet deep coral reef. The Osher Rainforest is four stories high and houses animals and amphibians in a fantastic layout. You can descend in a glass elevator to the deepest depths and look up through an acrylic tunnel to see fish swimming overhead in the flooded forest. The Kimball Natural History Museum has skeletons of a T-Rex and a blue whale, along with an array of interesting exhibits. At 8, Palace of Fine Arts. The Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco is the last remaining structure from the 1915 Panama Pacific Exposition. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, this classical-looking building is beautifully situated on a lagoon that reflects the mirror image on the surface of the calm water while ducks and geese drift by. The palace has been restored along with the grounds and today hosts art exhibitions and performances. The Palace of Fine Arts Theatre seats approximately 1,000 patrons. Next up at 7, Legion of Honour. An impressive neoclassical bow arts building in an amazing setting, the California Palace of the Legion of Honor is San Francisco's most exquisite museum. The Legion of Honor was the gift of the socialite, philanthropist and patron of the arts Alma de Bretteville Spreckles. Because of her love for all things Parisian, the museum was designed as a replica of the Palais de la Légion d'Honneur in Paris. The Legion of Honor Museum has a superb collection of European decorative arts, sculpture and paintings, along with antiquities from the Mediterranean and Near East. Admission to this museum also gives you same-day admission to the de Young Museum. The museum is in Lincoln Park, a gorgeous green space with a golf course and coastal woodlands and a wonderful place for a leisurely walk. Just outside the museum, visitors may follow the path along Lincoln Highway, which boasts spectacular ocean vistas and perfect outlooks onto the Golden Gate Bridge. Those seeking a more adventurous hike can lead to the Land's End Trail. This winding cliffside trail in a wild, rugged terrain offers sweeping Pacific Ocean views and panoramas of the Golden Gate Bridge. Next up at 6, Chinatown. You may have been to Chinatown in other cities, but San Francisco's Chinatown is a whole other realm. 
It is both the largest Chinatown outside of Asia and the oldest of its kind in North America. Almost completely destroyed in the 1906 earthquake, Chinatown was rebuilt entirely in the Chinese style and was soon even more attractive than before the disaster. Now with its temples, theatres, workshops, small businesses, stores, antique and souvenir shops, tea houses and traditional pharmacies, visiting Chinatown has become one of the top things to do in San Francisco. If you are travelling through San Francisco during an important Chinese holiday or event, you can expect to see an elaborate celebration. Chinese New Year celebrations are often considered the best in North America. The main street in Chinatown for tourists is Grant Avenue, with the Chinatown Gateway at Grant Avenue and Bush Street. Next at number 5, Golden Gate Park. Golden Gate Park, home to gardens and museums, is a fabulous green space in the heart of San Francisco, often considered the lungs of the city. Before development began in 1871, this was an area of arid dunes. Today, the park has a network of walking trails and cycling paths, more than 5,000 different kinds of plants and dozens of species of trees, several lakes, bridle paths and a buffalo paddock. The main attractions include the de Young Museum, the California Academy of Sciences Museum with Steinhardt Aquarium, the Japanese Tea Garden and the San Francisco Botanical Garden. Golden Gate Park is one of those places that can just as easily take up a couple of hours as a couple of days. Bike rentals are available and this can be a good way to explore the park rather than trying to do everything on foot. Alternatively, try an organized two and a half hour Segway tour with a local guide and hit all the major highlights. At 4. Ride the Cable Cars Cable cars were introduced in 1873 to help locals contend with the many hills the city is built on. Today, the few remaining cable cars offer tourists a great way to explore the city in historic fashion. Since 1964, these tram-like vehicles have had the unique distinction of being the only public transport system to be declared a historic monument. The Powell Mason and Powell Hyde are the most scenic routes. The cable cars will also get you to the major tourist attractions such as Fisherman's Wharf, Girardelli Square, the Ferry Building, Knob Hill and Lombard Street. Tickets can be purchased on board the cable car or if you are planning on more than a couple of rides or are going to be sightseeing for a few days, consider buying a pass. At 3. It's Fisherman's Wharf. Fisherman's Wharf is one of San Francisco's most popular tourist areas. If this is your first visit to the city and you only have a day or two to see the sights, Fisherman's Wharf is one of the best places to visit. This old section, once the Little Italy of San Francisco, is known for its shops, restaurants and beautiful setting along the waterfront. The views from Pier 39 back towards the city are exceptional. It's a fun place to stroll around and get a taste for the city. From here you can also take a sightseeing cruise for spectacular views of the city or organize a fishing charter. The docks by Pier 31 are some of the best areas in the city to see sea lions. Some of the main attractions in the area are Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, Musée Mécanique, Ripley's Believe It or Not and Girardelli Square. Restored 19th and 20th century ships line the waterfront at the Hyde Street Pier, which is now the San Francisco Maritime National Historic Park. The USS Pampanito, a National Historic Landmark, is a World War II submarine and part of the San Francisco Maritime National Historic Park. Pier 39, located in this general area, is home to more than 50 stores and unique places to eat. And now at 2, it's Alcatraz Island. The historic and notorious Alcatraz Penitentiary, located on Alcatraz Island in San Francisco Bay, is one of America's most infamous prisons. It operated for almost 30 years, closing in 1963 and reopening as a tourist attraction in 1973. Some of America's most well-known criminals were inmates here, including Al Capone and The Birdman, who would later form the basis for the fictional movie The Birdman of Alcatraz. You can take a ferry over to the island and tour the site while listening to an exceptional audio recording that offers a glimpse into life in the prison, rather than just a historical list of the facts. The narration is even voiced by former inmates and guards of Alcatraz. In the course of its 30-year existence, the penitentiary received a total of 1,576 convicts. There were never more than 250 at any one time, even though there were 450 cells measuring about 10 foot by 4 foot. At times, the number of guards and staff was greater than the number of convicts. 
While most people come for the history or the novelty of seeing a former prison, the island is now a prominent area for nesting seabirds. An easy, convenient and time-saving way to see Alcatraz and some of the other highlights of San Francisco, like Fisherman's Wharf, China Tower and the Golden Gate Bridge, is to take a combined Alcatraz and San Francisco City tour. If you have only one day to explore the city and Alcatraz is on your must-see list, this guided tour is the best option. Alcatraz regularly sells out, so booking in advance is strongly advised. And finally, as you might have guessed, at number one, the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge is a California icon gracing San Francisco Bay. It is the most photographed site in the city, with the orange structure backed by blue water, or in many cases, peeking through low-lying cloud. At night, the floodlit structure is equally striking. Connecting San Francisco with Marin County and other districts further north, the Golden Gate Bridge was, at one time, designated the greatest man-made site in the United States by the US Travel Service. Opened on May 28, 1937, the bridge took four years to build and at the time of its completion was the longest suspension bridge in the world, measuring approximately two miles in length. If you want to drive over the Golden Gate Bridge, the road is US Highway 101 or SR1 and walkways on either side of the bridge are open to pedestrians and cyclists. The walk begins at the start of the bridge, accessible from the Presidio Shuttle and ends with a viewpoint in Marin County. Many locals enjoy biking across the bridge to the nearby waterfront town of Sausalito. Pedestrian access is on the east sidewalk. Bicycle access is on the east and west sidewalks. The bridge is only open to pedestrians and cyclists during daylight hours. For a great view of the bridge, or for anyone interested in photographing the bridge, there are a number of ideal vantage points. From the San Francisco side, Knob Hill, an area known for its posh old mansions, offers some beautiful views over the bridge. On the opposite side of the bridge, in Marin County, Golden Gate National Recreation Area is another good place to visit. Also, if you are planning on taking a tour to Alcatraz, there are completely open views from the boat and island. And there you have the top 10 greatest tourist attractions in San Francisco. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.